Dolly 3 is now available for free in Bing. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with very exciting news for those of us who have been just pressing refresh on our ChatGPT Plus subscriptions, hoping to see Dolly 3 arrive. Well, now not only us, but basically anyone with a Microsoft account can use Dolly 3 directly via Bing. To get access to Dolly 3, just go to bing.com slash images slash create. And from there, it will ask you to either sign in or to create a new account. Now, each week, free users get 100 boosts that increase the speed with which images are created, but can also create more images after that at a slower pace. As you've probably seen, one of the things that makes Dolly 3 exciting for people who have been using tools like Stable Diffusion and Midjourney is that it seems to handle text a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's certainly a huge upgrade from what we've had so far, at least among the main services that most people use. Now, of course, given that people are getting access to Dolly 3 now, there is a huge amount of discussion on Twitter slash X around how it compares to Midjourney. Dreaming Tulpa, I think, sums up a lot of what I'm seeing, which has to do with Dolly 3's main performance differential being at how good it can actually interpret the natural language prompts that people are trying to achieve. In other words, I haven't seen a lot of people say that Dolly 3 is distinctly better than Midjourney when it comes to the quality of imagery, but instead that the natural language prompting allows people to get much closer to what they were actually imagining than they can using Midjourney prompting. Indeed, in many ways, Midjourney feels like an act of prompt engineering, while Dolly 3 promises just full on natural language inputs and the ability to refine once again with natural language. Tulpa says, I'm super impressed with how Dolly interpreted the prompt below. While Midjourney's outputs are beautiful, it's nowhere near what I was looking for. Midjourney recently said they're going to improve upon this, and oh boy, I hope they do. This feels like the first time MJ got a serious competitor. Tech Hala did something interesting where they tested 10 different prompts, Midjourney versus Dolly 3, and rated them on a scale using accuracy, aesthetics, detail, consistency, and believability. Tech Hala sums up, while I still believe Midjourney is slightly better overall, Dolly 3 is very close. In fact, in terms of believability and accuracy, it's even ahead. Mad Pencil responds and says, MJ did mostly better on aesthetics and details, but Dolly stays faithful to the prompts. Now, moving on to a little bit of Apple AI news. In a recent discussion with UK Press, Tim Cook said that that company was not only not planning on layoffs in the country, but that they would be increasing the size of their artificial intelligence team in the United Kingdom. Now, there really weren't more details than that. Cook just responded to a question around AI saying, we're hiring in that area, yes, and so I do expect investment to increase. This is obviously a boon to a country whose prime minister has said very clearly that he wants them to be a leader in both the regulation and the development of artificial intelligence. Now, we have just come off of September, and in many ways it felt at the beginning like a relatively quiet extension of the summer, only to, of course, over the last week and a half or so, really pop off with the announcement of a huge slate of products. However, looking back, one of the things that was clear was just how much venture capital activity there was over the last month. Chief AI Officer on Twitter sums up the top 10 AI startup funding rounds from last month, including that big $4 billion investment from Amazon into Anthropic, which for the sake of completeness isn't exactly a $4 billion investment right up front, but up to $4 billion being invested over time. There's also a $500 million investment into Databricks. Now, Databricks also made headlines for a deeper partnership with Microsoft that some saw as Microsoft hedging their bets relative to their relationship with OpenAI. Other big investment rounds include a $223 million investment into Helsing, which is an AI company focused on the defense industry that is backed by Spotify's Daniel Ek, $200 million to Imbue, $125 million to Infabrica, $110 million to Dematrix, $100 million to Writer, $100 million to Inceptive, $100 million to Prion, and another $85 million to Pixis, which is AI for marketers. Nine nine-figure rounds in a single month shows just how much activity there is in this space. Now, of course, the other big thing that happened in September was the culmination of the writer strike. The discourse around the compromise that they reached with AI has been really fascinating to me, as so far it seems a lot more like a Rorschach test in terms of how people interpret it than a clear win or loss for either AI or for the writers themselves. But whether it represents a win or a loss, another piece of news from this morning shows just how much AI is going to be a part of celebrity and pop culture in general going forward. Over the weekend, Tom Hanks posted a picture of himself from a video and said, Beware, there's a video out there promoting some dental plan with an AI version of me. I have nothing to do with it. 
Now, Hanks is interesting because he is very clearly not some visceral AI Luddite or someone who dismisses the excitement around the technology. On a podcast recently, Hanks said, anyone can now recreate themselves at any age they are by way of AI or deepfake technology. I could be hit by a bus tomorrow and that's it, but performances can go on and on and on. Outside the understanding of AI and deepfakes, there'll be nothing to tell you that it's not me and me alone. That's certainly an artistic challenge, but it's also a legal one. He added, without a doubt, people will be able to tell that's an AI, but the question is, will they care? There are some people that won't care that won't make that delineation. Finally today, another story at the intersection of artificial intelligence and health. ScienceAlert.com writes, AI identifies brain signals associated with recovering from depression. The piece writes, it could soon be possible to measure changes in depression levels like we can measure blood pressure or heart rate. So the piece is about a recent study, and effectively what that study was trying to show is that while currently all we have to go on when it comes to understanding levels of depression is patient self-reporting their mood, that's problematic because so many things can affect one's mood. A stressful thing that happened in the morning can impact how someone's day was, just as much as any sort of actual underlying depression issues. Given that, they write, scientists in the U.S. used a combination of electrode implants and AI analysis to try to pinpoint changes in brain activity patterns triggered by deep brain stimulation. The result was that the team of researchers, which included people from the Georgia Institute of Technology, the Emory University School of Medicine, and the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, did end up identifying a brain signal that could be used as a biomarker linked to recovery from depression. So far, it seems to be more than 90% accurate in its feedback. Now, one of the things that makes the study most exciting is that each of these types of studies builds on itself, given that there's now a new data set for future AI to be trained on. As the piece writes, the AI was trained using images of the participants' brains at the start and end of the process, giving it the opportunity to spot neurological differences that the human eye might miss. One of the patients responded well to treatment for four months before relapsing, for example, and the recovery signal disappeared a month before the relapse. Now that the AI has been trained, it can be used in further studies like this, giving researchers a much better set of data than they get with self-reporting alone. One of the things that I see starting to shake out is that as politicians are talking about weighing the risks of AI with the opportunities, the area that is clearest to people around those opportunities seems to be in the health sphere. The more studies we get like this, the more likely it is people fight to continue to be able to leverage those benefits in the medical field, even as policy attempts to put guardrails around other types of AI in order to prevent future bad outcomes. In any case, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.